Late season insect scouting in soybeans is so incredibly important. Today we want to talk about a few of the different bugs you might find in your fields. Well, soybean aphids, Brian, are going to get most of the attention. They're, they're this pest that when you get a heavy aphid infestation, it's a disaster out in fields, but I do want to focus on some of the defoliators too. Let me just summarize what we want you to know when you walk out into that field. Number one is that Darren mentioned defoliation. Okay, defoliation is only a small part of yield loss. So when we look at this yield loss overall from losing part of a leaf, just look at the hail charts. Go to Iowa State's hail charts or University of Nebraska's hail charts, and that'll show you it takes a tremendous amount of defoliation to lose yield, unless you get disease in there. The problem with defoliation by bugs is that many times the insects are carrying disease into that plant. So that's the big reason why we don't want those bugs defoliating the plants, because they're injecting a toxin or a disease into the plant very often. Yes, anytime a plant is defoliated slightly, it's got open wounds, now you're more likely to have both bacterial and fungal diseases, but I do worry most about insects as opposed to wind and hail damage. Well certainly Brian, that disease problem could be an issue as you open up the plant and and here's why we put a fungicide oftentimes whenever we're spraying an insecticide and growers who do that say year on year they're going to see a good average gain over time but when we look at just for the defoliation take the disease piece out of it take the fungicide piece out of it do you wait for 25 percent defoliation do you wait for so many plants out of 10 uh, to have leaf yeah but you can't take them? you can't take disease out of it and that's the whole thing what we're really after here Here's the thing, when you walk into the field, every time when you're finding harmful insects there, you have to ask yourself the question, have I reached an economic threshold? So you've got the defoliation part, you've got the disease part, you, you've got to yeah, put those together all the time. I can't ever just separate the one from the other. And you have to say, all right, is it going to pay to treat? When I look at the insecticides, most of them cost $2. The cheap pyrethroids cost $2. If you have some spider mites out there, you need a spider mite type product, okay, you might have to spend two to four more dollars, maybe it's a little more than that. But look at how much is it gonna cost me to treat and how much is my crop actually worth? And the whole thing is, as we go through this summer and soybean prices continue to go up all the way into the fall, well, your crop's worth more, which means the economic threshold goes down. So for example, soybean aphids, the threshold I can promise you is not 250 aphids per plant. The earlier the bug comes in, the more chance you have to have disease the more chance you have to have yield loss. So what I'm saying is the earlier it is, the lower that threshold is. Then the more the crop is worth and the less it costs to treat. Okay, you gotta look at those things. That really impacts what your economic threshold is. For example, if I'm already out there spraying fungicide or foliar fertilizer or a biological, and I can just throw $2 worth of insecticide in, I only have to have a few aphids per plant, probably 10, maybe 50 at the most, and I can justify treatment when I look at today's soybean price and that very, very low cost. The other thing that's really key here is get out and scout your field. So if you're going to be spraying a field, get out and scout, do a sweep net through the field. See what you've got out there for bugs because, all right, you may not have that many soybean aphids, but you also have some bean leaf beetles and you also have some of these thistle caterpillars and green clover worms and other bugs that are out there. They're all going to come together. It's not going to be, well, did I meet the threshold on any single bug? No, it's, I've got a whole bunch of different bugs out there and yeah, I've got 10 of these and I've got 20 of those and I've got 30 of those. It's a big deal and it does add up on top of each other. You just have to scout first. I don't want you throwing insecticide in just saying, well, just throw it in. I'm going out to spray. I'm going to save a trip. Well, if you don't have any bugs out there, you're wasting your money. And if you had one aphid per acre, well, you're wasting your money too. And you're killing off all the beneficials needlessly. If the beneficials have this thing under control and you've got no harmful bugs, there's no point putting insecticide in. One other thing to note is your insect pressure is likely to be different between fields. So as you go into one field and you say, man, I got some bugs here. You go into another field, you don't see quite as many. One of the things that we've heard a lot from farmers over the last few years is, hey, if I put a seed treatment on with a good rate of a neonic treatment in there, I don't have as many of quite a few of these species of bugs, including soybean aphids in those fields later in the season. So yeah, if you get some suppression with your seed treatment, that's awesome. 
But here's the other thing. Many of those companies with those seed treatments have respray programs. So if you do have insect outbreaks later, they help you with the cost. You may even get free insecticide. So make sure you check that out with your seed and seed treatment providers. All right, so even though it's getting later in the season and you might say, oh, my wheat's done, I don't want to scout my corn anymore, you have to be looking at soybeans all the way into mid-August. Soybeans make their yield late in the year. Don't let bugs rob that yield from you, especially when the soybean price is going up and when insecticide costs so little. Just make sure you're scouting at least once a week in all your fields. It may not be too expensive to control some of these bugs, but how much will it cost to control our weed of the week? We'll talk about this weed coming up next.